Hey everybody, welcome to part three. This is uh, the last part of the series. Today we're going to do a lot of sound design. So in part two, we stop with this lead sound. Um, actually, we made the lead sound and we talked a bit about music theory. All samples and MIDI files are available for free. Have a look um, down below in the description. Also, all the presets um, we want to recreate or we haven't in the, in the previous parts are also available inside this folder, as well as the mastering chain and yeah, everything you need, basically. We're going to do those plugs here. So we, we will start with this one. Then we will do this one here. So on the track, it's not um, happening that much, but on the group, as you can see, um, there are some effects. And again, we have this combination, the amp and the cabinet, uh, compression and reverb, um, all that stuff as well. So what we have to do is now, if we want to compare the sound, we are first going to deactivate everything that's on the group and on the tracks. So just the massive sound will be um, not that bright, of course, and no reverb, so it will sound a bit uh, dull. For everyone who has the preset pack, it is um, drum code, preset pack, uh, lead, dreamy. All right, so um, those are the midis. It is always straight on the grid. Those are two bars here. So now let's go to new sound so we can start with the same initial preset. So we can say that there are two things important and, and one thing will be the modulation, the phase modulation. Of course, we have some low pass filter with a, a little bit of um, envelope applied, um, but then also the uh, initial oscillator uh, wave table will be important. We need the frozen um, here. Actually, now let's listen to it. We're going down with the wavetable position to around 11 o'clock. Um, so the next one is going to be oscillator two and the drive three. Let's listen to this one here. Sounds quite similar, also because we are in a relative high octave. Let's go down with the wavetable position here as well, to around 2 o'clock. Right, and both. Okay, and now for the last one, we're going to take the mellophone or something. Uh, Mellophant, this one here. to filter one, and we're going to apply in low pass four filter here. And now let's take an envelope here, and let's shape the cut off a bit. So we want to start at past nine o'clock and move up to around one o'clock. And basically now we 
want to shape the decay and the so-called sustain and maybe also the release with, with the C. So um, I would suggest here to go down with the sustain a bit and uh, let's have a listen. Okay, let's actually uh, increase the decay time a bit. If you move the decay time beyond the 12 o'clock, uh, it has quite a big um, influence of the, to, the, to the shape and to the length. Um, we can move down further the sustain. A little bit more release after the note stops, it will not interrupt immediately. And we can give it a bit of, a bit more of attack here. Of course, we need to change the resonance here. Um, we just want to apply it um, slightly bit. And go down with the cutoff as well. So now it uh, sounds pretty thin, right? And this is because if we go to the voicing tab, we can see we have, we're just playing one voice per oscillator. So let's increase this value. Now we can also activate the pan position. So this means, uh, Massive will spread those different um, voices to the left and to the right. And the final thing is we're going to activate this reset rear gate. So we tell the um, oscillators to start always at the same um, point of the cycle. Imagine a sine wave looks like this. And if you say activate rear gate and everything is on the one, all the oscillators will always start at zero degree. So this is zero, this is 180, and this is um, another 180, so 360. So this is this, what this represents here. So now we just say all the oscillators have to start exactly at the zero point. This um, is now important if we start to modulate something. We want to apply some phase modulation to the second oscillator. Um, so we activate it here and we're going to apply it to the second one. This is one, two, three and off. And yeah, let's listen to it. Here with the pitch, you control the modulation. So, so at which pitch relative to the single oscillator, this modulation is going to interact with the oscillator. So, for instance, if we say uh, zero means uh, it will just be the same note, same octave, and one is just one note higher, and this will uh, now really create some tension. You can also go for just a few cents off, like in this case 13 cents. Now you have this kind of uh, spread effect. Um, which you can also have by activating this pitch cutoff. Um, if you go down, for example, for 12 semitones, this will sound quite nice. So this is the same pitch, but it is an octave lower. And of course, you can go also an octave higher. And all other notes will have much tension. But the seven is possible. Seven means it's the seventh seven tone um, starting from the root. Um, and the root is just, it's just the current note you're playing with the oscillator. 
So and mathematically, those two nodes have a lot of uh, frequencies in common. So they are really similar. And this is why it doesn't sound so nasty here. And we can just go down. We just want to apply it a slightly bit. So now we have already this vibrato um, effect assigned. And if you go to the oscillation tab, you can see vibrato and here you can, if you have to do it manually, just drag and drop in those macros. So, and before we continue with some fine tuning, we need some effects and for the patch, uh, we have these um, chorus ensemble, but we do not use it now, but it has a nice effect as well. We need this, this reverb and we want to have a quite big size and around 40% wet. And now we want to have density. So that means um, essentially the reverb just uh, consisting out of thousands of uh, small delays. And yeah, so this is basically the, the amount of delays, maybe you can say it like this. And we're going up with the color. This is just um, like if you have this reverb here in Ableton, you have the possibility to give it some high cut. Next thing, we're going to the EQ. We want to have a bit of a uh, high shelf here. And um, let's take out a little bit of the lower end. Um, we could also now apply a bit more again of the cutoff. Before we move on to the effects we will apply um, on the group, uh, we will also apply this parabolic shaper to it and drive to around one o'clock. You have to activate it. Then uh, we have to check on uh, routing where the second oscillator uh, insert effect is routed to. And now it is uh, routed after filter two. But there is no, uh, there is no signal uh, coming through, so we have to change it. And so this, those are the oscillators. They're going through the filters and then out through the effects, master feedback. So we can say, let's have the insert two here, applied after both filters, basically. Okay, so um, actually this is uh, changing a lot. And now we want to have some LFO. So drag and drop it here to onto the knob. Now this LFO is um, basically a combination of those two shapes here, the sine wave and the sawtooth here. Um, but Actually, let's um, just take the sine wave here. So we can hear it, but um, it is too slow and we can change this by uh, like increasing the rate. And of course, um, if you do it like this, it is kind of um, difficult to match uh, the beats per minute of your project. So you can go to sync. You're going to have the um, 32. Just a bit applied. Of 
Great, so and now to make it uh, even more interesting, a nice feature, we can now take the third envelope, or the second, it doesn't matter, and apply it to the amp. Now, for instance, um, just increase the sustain, and now the attack again. And now the amount of uh, LFO applied to the parabolic shaper um, is increasing, kind of vibrator effect, but on an uh, insert. And we can uh, decrease the attack, and then it's uh, obvious. So those are nice little tricks to keep the sound uh, like evolving and interesting. Do it with the uh, intensity, with the wavetable position, with any of those modulation with, for example, also uh, really nice would be, for example, we could apply it to the white noise. So let's just take the same LFO to the amplitude of the white no uh, noise. Endless possibilities before we do any um, fine tuning, we, we move to our group. So no big deal, we're going to have a look at every single effect. We start with the auto filter here. So it just moves down here we have some simple uh, has effect applied, so so I think I already showed this 20 times. Um, so you take a simple delay, you go on time mode, both sides, and then you're going to delay one side, in this case the right side, more than the left side. Feedback to zero and drive it to 100% and this uh, gives the illusion that um, the sound is coming from the left side. But also this is not a sound design, but a mixing uh, issue here. So more reverb. Let's say you have the default reverb now. You're going to deactivate here this um, high cut, low cut, spin, diffusion and chorus. You're going to increase the pre-delay from, from 2 or something to 13.6 milliseconds, around that. Shape is, uh, can stay like, a, like it is. Increase the size from 100 to uh, 65 here, 165. Increase the stereo amount from 100 to 13. This is not so important. Decay time, really important. 1.2 to 6.2. So it's really long. Those two can stay like they are. We apply a lot of uh, signal, wet sec signal to it, so 46% and a bit down with the tail of the verb, but it's actually not so important and add um, down with the reflection, the early reflection of the reverb. So actually, let's listen to it. Um, I'm going to increase the uh, lead plugs now. Clue compressor, we have a quite long attack of 10 milliseconds and a really short, kind of short release here of 100 milliseconds. Uh, ratio stays on 4 to 1. And yeah, we, we're just moving down with the threshold and um, doing some makeup. 
um, afterwards. Um, looks like our massive might be too loud here, so let's um, turn down this knob. Okay, um, yeah, and it's um, on drive at parallel mode, so just 70% applied. Well, now uh, we have the cabinet on speakers. Um, you uh, choose the four times, I think this 10 inch or something, I don't know. Distance is far, and you have it on uh, the orange dy dynamic and uh, dual. You apply it by 43%. And this is going to um, make the sound like darker and kind of reduces the sonic um, richness or quality. Let's apply the amp. This can sound really nasty, so we have to be careful. First pick the blues mode. And the output is even on mono, this is interesting. <laughs> and uh, only 32%. And then, as you can see, um, choose those values here for presence, treble, uh, middle, and bass. Also, your gain and volume. I really like this combination, especially in this uh, template. I um, use it often. If you have Ableton Standard, though, you ha don't have those two effects, if I remember right. So here we are, it's already almost a sound, quite aggressive. Um, we could now um, go back to Massive, also reduce a bit of the cutoff. Uh, we could also remember this sixth LFO applied to the cutoff. Uh, let's compare it. We have too much reverb. We're going a bit down with the color and with the dry wet here, also with the size. Maybe also a bit with the decay. So now we can also increase um, our lead uh, group. The original has a less cut off. As you can hear, it's not that bright, but maybe also due to our LFO here. Uh, I used another one in the original file doesn't matter that much. Um, let's continue right away with the next one. This one, let's have a look at the MIDI files. It's quite interesting. You can see in between we have, it is important to have the right amount of velocity, 54, 205. Okay, sounds like this. So if we deactivate the effects on a group, 
and we deactivate the EQ8 again. This is what it sounds. Okay, again, let's go on new sound. If you compare both patches, uh, the one we made and, and the one we want to recreate now, they are really similar. It is up to the uh, modulation. It is up to oscillators we choose. Okay, so oscillator one pitches down by one octave and we want to have some sine. Uh, you can take both of them, this doesn't matter because our wavetable position is all the way to the sign. And everything to filter one. The next oscillator, we want to pitch it down by one cent. This will be important later if we activate the restart rear gate and also um, the modulation. Um, we want to have another sign. Again, all the way to sign. And just go back with the amp, everything to filter one. And on the last oscillator, um, we have another sign. Uh, this time, the signal is uh, going through both filters here. This is important. Okay, before we play, let's activate the velocity by track drop this to the sidechain here. So now our uh, notes are velocity sensitive and we go down with um, our volume. Okay, now let's listen in. Okay, so like before, we wanna use four voices, but we do not um, apply any pan position here. And again, restart, we are gate. Okay, it sounds quite sharp and um, because of that we're going to apply this high, um, high shelf uh, minus 7.5 at 2 kilohertz and uh, we have this low cut here at uh, 600 and something. Okay, again. So and now we're going to um, set a different starting point for uh, for the phase of oscillator one. Now again, we're coming to the modulation section. And <laughs> um, again, we have seven semitones. Uh, this time we will apply ring modulation here to the first oscillator but just a slightly bit, let's listen in. And the next thing is here, we have this phase modulation again, this time applied to oscillator three. And yeah, let's listen in. Here, go to the EQ and... Uh, sound design wise, the interesting thing here is of course, if you look to our spectrum here, we can see that we do not have an even signal, but we have those single peaks, which are typical for the sine wave. Um, again, the uh, parabolic shaper, we could also go for the sine shaper. And um, I think we take quite similar settings. This will now distort the signal further and maybe also reduce those single peaks. Okay, um, you might remember 
Um, let's have the right insert here. To make it a bit more pleasant, uh, we will set the filters to serial mode. So this is parallel, so the sound of the oscillator 3 will go through filter 1 out, through filter 2 out. If we set it to parallel and now serial, it is going first uh, through filter 1 and then 2 and then out. Now going to apply again the low pass 4 some envelope here and I think it was the same shape than before, something like this. Just a bit of resonance and on the second one we apply the scream filter and this is a quite interesting filter here. Um, Cut off to around uh, 12 o'clock, scream filter knob here to around 11, and the resonance down. And now the interesting thing is uh, that we're going to apply again some LFO. And yeah, I think let's go for the same rate here once again. Let's have a listen. Maybe just again um, making the sine wave. So there it is, this uh, sound we noticed from the original patch. Certainly we can also apply it to the uh, cutoff here and maybe increase it a bit. Okay, and this time we want to have a different rate on the cutoff than scream cutoff. So let's take another LFO here, apply it to this cutoff. This time we're just picking really high rate, go a bit down with the amp, and again we can take the uh, sine wave. Okay, perfect. I think this is what we um, want to achieve here. We can also apply some some noise to it. Let's move it to filter one. some LFO. And maybe again some reverb here. And this time we make use of the uh, chorus. Low shelf, move up with the high shelf a bit. Yeah, basically this is our sound. So without the group. Okay, so now we have our plugs and let's listen to it. Okay, definitely too much bass. Let's go down by maybe almost four or four dBs, yeah. Go.
go to this dirty step here. Okay, so I did some color coding. You can find the preset of this raw effects inside the folder. We talked about uh, the pads. We made these plug sounds here. Also, we had a look at the Rave pen. Um, this preset can be found in the folder as well. Then we made uh, this plug sound in part two as well. It was the last preset we made. And in this part so far, we made those two lead plugs. And <clears throat> I think we have another two interesting patches this scream lead. And I told you in part one, I think, uh, this synth. Um, here I have a recording, then I reversed it. Okay, then a new instance of Massive. We go to new sound. So now I have all the same preset patch to start with. And the first thing we will notice is that <clears throat> we're just playing one note, it's the root. And, but it sounds different, right? It sounds like we have several voices here. Obviously, <clears throat> what we have to do now, we have to split uh, those um, oscillators to different to different pitches. Let's take the first one and um, we pitch it down by 12 semitones, one octave, wave table and intensity can stay like this and we just move down the amp a bit and everything to, uh, through filter one. Now on the next one, um, we're going to increase it by three semitones and we're going one step or one cent down everything fully applied here so we have a saw wave here we have another saw wave here playing you can see this because of the wave table position this is all the way to the all the way square this is all the way saw and finally we have a different one it's the escalation two and with that one um, we will have a kind of a wavetable mix down with the intensity a bit and also to filter one. This one we're going to pitch up by seven semitones and a few cents. This is important because this is introducing this kind of uh, spread effect. Now we have a root node which is an octave lower than the other two. Then we have a minor third, so three semitones up is a minor third, and then we have our fifth, seven semitones up, and this makes a basic minor chord. So let's listen how this sounds. Okay, before we move on, I think we should apply some reverb. A big size here, um, color and density up, and maybe around 11 o'clock try that. So let's listen again. We can listen to the escalator here. So this is the exotic one and those two are just basically uh, saw waves. All right, so the next thing is 
low pass far filter and remember everything is going uh, through filter one and as always we're going to apply envelope here so we want to have the cut of perform something like this going down we are starting at this point this d this point here we're moving up so we're moving up and then we are falling down maybe we want to fall down further and so let's just go down with the sustain level and listen to it and first let's reduce the resonance to around nine o'clock okay so now we are quickly falling down to this uh, to this point but we have a pretty long um, sustained note to play so um, let's move up with the sustain now also go to the fourth envelope which is controlling the amp and um, go down with this sustain here as well before we tweaking the cutoff here let's introduce some other stuff um, first of all we want to have some white noise just move up the amp basically can stay like this And now let's go to the modulation section and to the phase and we will apply this to the first oscillator. Now pitch it down by five semitones. So now this is interesting because if you increasing the amount here, you will find your fifth seven semitones up. And if you go down, you will find your uh, fifth five semitones down. Okay, so now let's add a bit of distortion. We can go to the second insert and have the sign shaper drive and drive it down. Also go to routing. So we did this already several times. We want to have this after both filters. This is the signal flow, oscillators, through filters, out. Here's just filter two, here's just filter one. Till now we just used one voice per um, oscillator. So let's move it up to seven. Seven is a kind of a magical number here. I think because it's kind of symmetrical because you have one in the middle and then you have uh, three, three on the side. So uh, first let's go down with the volume. Now we can also increase this pitch cutoff. And here you can set the range. For example, now it is set from zero cents up to one semitone. So this would just be a spread of one semitone at the first point, which is quite um, atmospheric. So we move it back down and apply it basically just a tiny bit. Something like this. As soon as we um, added some voices, we can also go to this pan position knob, activate it. Now we can push it to the sides, the signal. Okay, now let's go to the next effect here and take the dimension expander just a bit um, back with the dry wet. 
So this is always a good combination. You have the span position and the dimension expander. And now also some EQing and we can maybe apply a bit of high shelf, but uh, now we want to boost a certain frequency. So um, this is the amount you want to add or subtract. And here you're just going to select the frequency. Um, let's open the cut of a bit. could also do something like this. Um, so we can increase the decay and go down with the sustain. So, um, this way we would uh, reach a, a pretty low level of cutoff here at the end of our MIDI clip. And let's try it out. <laughs> Okay, so now let's compare those two. So one thing you can notice is that um, we're going too far down with the decay here. We found that so it was the face knob and also pushed the amp up here but it is the face knob which is giving the um, the foundation um, here the envelope settings are important so 
really long decay and sustain about um, yeah, 10, 11 o'clock. Let's listen to it without the modulation. Yeah, interesting. So basically now what we can do, you might notice, um, we can just go to resampling. And before we record, we have to deactivate all the stuff we have on the master. Record. Command Alt F, which will show the fades. Or you can go right click um, show fades here. Here's the interesting part. And uh, now we want to have this fader applied to the sample. Click and say consolidate. This fader we applied here is rendered into the sample. And we can go to reverse. Ta -da. So now we have our effect. And this is our next sound we're going to create. I really like the sound, um, but it's a bit complicated because, because without this EQ applied and this cabinet, it sounds really really harsh. It is um, it is for ten near and dynamic dual and here around seventy percent and if you don't have this cabinet um, we're just going to apply another EQ eight and perform something like this let's compare. Something like this if you don't have the cabinet. And so the first one is the low cut at 600 hertz. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Here we have our first catch is around 626 minus 6.8 dB and a Q of 708. And the next one is at 1.88 minus 7 dBs with even a tighter Q of 10.6 and finally um, around 3k minus 7 dB around 7.3 Q and finally we have a high shelf here adding uh, 3 dB starting with uh, 4.5 kilohertz.
Okay, first let's try a different approach. This patch has a lot of distortion and um, heavy filters. So as you can see, first of all, this um, browner tube here controlled with um, and macro five. So this is applied around here. So let's take this one out and listen to it. So this has a quite big impact on the sound. Now we have this acid filter and quickly let's analyze what happening with the signal. It is going through filter one and two equally loud applied. And then we have the mix a bit more towards uh, output of output of filter two. If we just take out the filters and the browner tube. Okay, interesting. It was quite obvious. This paper noise here. Deactivate this one and the feedback because the feedback was also doing a slightly bit. Well, let's listen. In. Let's activate feedback. Part of the feedback, um, the sound is made out of the filters, the tube, and the paper noise. Um, even the modulation is not so important. We could let's have a look. It isn't even applied. You can see um, four controls the phase, so this is not applied. You can just take it out. So now for this patch, you can take almost any oscillator wave table, just pitch two of them a bit off center. And then we have one voice, nothing happening here, nothing happening here. We're just using the fourth envelope, which is controlling the amp. And you can see we're increasing the decay. We reducing uh, the sustain, adding a bit of release here, and then we add a lot of attack. But you could also make this with some aut automation of the volume, for example. This is pretty much the same uh, thing. Nothing on those envelopes. Shape this volume envelope like this. You can choose any oscillator you want. Modulation is off, paper noise, a lot of reverb, as you can see, um, a lot of high shelf, but this um, also depends a bit on, you know, how you set these cutoffs. So we left with the LFO. All right, so what's going on here? As you can see, this macro here is controlling the M, the rate, and this way, it is just the same as if I'm doing it like this. This thing here is controlling the amp of the LFO, basically like this. Curve fader is up to the sawtooth. You can. Choose your waveform here, drag and drop it like this. So we have the asset filter and the scream filter. And now just get creative. Um, to be honest, you can do a lot of different things. You can also um, maybe change the rate.
Okay, um, yeah, we can go on for hours here. The basics are acid, scream, and tube with different noises, maybe feedback, and you know, the rest is just optional. This lead preset here can be found in the folder. It is similar to another one we've already made. You will find all the MIDI files and samples I want to thank you for watching. If you like it, subscribe, thumbs up, and have a look at productionmusiclife.com. And I hope to see you next time. Bye.